is it possible to create a great business doing what you love? Can we make money doing the service or selling the product that we genuinely enjoy? So that's what this video is going to be about. Some overall comments on the strategy of how this happens and why so many people can't seem to, to create it. Um, okay, so I think where I want to start with this is to, uh, is to talk, talk about the two sources of energy that drive us, that motivate us in our business. One source is internal, broadly speaking. Another source is external. The internal source includes sort of like what you enjoy, um, the peak experiences you've had that excited you so much you want to share with the world. It includes um, things you've read, things you've watched that really inspired you. And you said, well, I want to share this with others. Uh, it also includes um, your connection with your divine source, what that, whatever that means to you. So you might say, oh, um, I feel called to offer this or to provide this product or service. So that's the internal source. It's all the stuff that's going on here with you uh, and, your, and your life, your experiences, your passion, essentially. There's a second source of energy that can motivate our business, the external source, which is to look at what other people, the people that are going to buy from us, look at what motivates them. What are their struggles? What are their yearnings and goals? What would they love to experience? What are they buying? Because if you look at the buying patterns of the people that you are selling to, it gives you direct information about what they're voting for in the economy. Your income, where does it come from? Does your income come from your internal source of you know, intuition and passion and, you know, your, your, your affirmations, does that where, is that where money comes from? Not really. Money, most directly, your money, your income comes from other people's spending. This is really important because I think a lot of us who are heart-based or spiritual, spiritually based, we can get too heavily weighed on the side of if I want to, to make money, get rich, whatever it, that it means for you, I have to like align myself and my energy with, you know, the, the, the cosmos and um, affirm that money's coming to me and, and all that internal, essentially internal stuff. It's, it's your own connection with the divine source, right? Now, I don't know what you believe about the divine source, but I believe that God speaks through everybody or god works through more than just you obviously <laughs> even in your own life even in your own life the universe or god or source or higher power works not just through your own imagination and affirmation and intuition and passion no it works through your <laughs> your divine source works through every influence on your life including everybody around you all the people you interact with all the events that happen you know that's all part of you know the divine plan or the divine action and so i think it's really unfortunately myopic to say if i want money i need to do more affirmations or i need to be more energy aligned i mean that's that's one part of it sure but the money at the end of the day, the direct money doesn't come from your affirmations or your alignment with your energy. No, it comes from somebody else saying, hey, can I buy that from you? Hey, can I hire you for that? It comes from, and of course, your energy influences other, your relationship to other people, your interactions with other people. You might even believe there's some vibrations going out there that somehow vibrationally attracts other people. Who knows, right? But for sure, it, it affects your interactions with others. But again, they their decision to buy from you is what ends up putting money in your, in your bank account. So in other words, back to this idea of two sources of energy, 
the internal or your internal so your internal connection with the divine and external your external connection with the divine noticing what's the divine saying to me through other people's the other people that i know that i'm able to interact with look at looking at their behaviors what is the divine saying saying to me now i really do believe that you know god quote unquote speaks through the market when it comes to business when it comes to finances and having enough uh, to sustain your business, um, having a viable product or service, God speaks through the market. God doesn't really speak through your own individual connection to God or source or the universe. God speaks through the market more than God speaks to. Because the thing is, if you, if you heavily weigh this idea of aligned energy and you know, law of attraction, then you you don't realize how much you're just in your own head. And then you're like, how come money is not there? Well, because money is in everyone else's head and everyone else's hands. That's where money is. So, so this is why lots of unspiritual people, have you noticed, make lots of money. Lots of unspiritual and unethical people also make lots of money. Well, why is that? If money is spiritual and it comes from you know, energy alignment and and being a good person and law of, law of, you know, law of attraction. How come so many people who believe in none of that do no affirmations? Their energy sometimes is all over the place. Uh, it's not aligned. And they're mean to other people. And yet they make a lot of money. Why is that? It's because they, they have taken a more, um, shall we say, secular path to making money, which is, I don't care what my energy and my ideas are. I care about how to persuade other people to give me money. I care about noticing what the buying patterns are and then aligning my actions with those buying patterns, aligning my products and services with those buying patterns in the market, and then therefore I make plenty of money. So it's, this is why it's so important to understand this difference of these two energies. As a good person, as a heart-centered, soulful person, Obviously, you want to align your energy with what you believe to be your divine source and your 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 um, most uh, the path of integrity for you, right? Of course, it, that you highly pri prioritize that, my, myself included. And yet, we those of us who are this kind of this kind of person can be too much in our own heads, and so we are too much way towards the energy of the internal, and we forget the energy of the external. So this is what I call the dichotomy of passion versus compassion. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it nicely rather than persuasion or, um, you know, uh, profit motive or whatever. I'm just saying passion and compassion because I think it does apply. So passion, we've already talked about sort of your, your own getting caught up with your ideas and excitement and, oh, I'd love to try this. Oh, I... I have a peak experience I think everyone should know about. You know, I have enlightenment experience that I want to now convey this wisdom to the world or, uh, or whatever. Or I have, so many, I have so many skills here that I know would be helpful for others. That's all your passion. That's all, that's all you and your internal energy. Now it's perhaps time. Uh, I think most of, the, most of you that I'm speaking to are probably too heavily weighed on, on the passion side of things because you're heart-based, you're intuitive, you're visionary you are authentic and so you tend to be um you yeah you you want to pave your own way and live a life that that isn't weighed down by other people's pressure and opinions right and demands etc i understand that and at the same time if you're in business and you want your business to succeed to thrive at least to be even sustain you know viable you need to look at and work with the energy of compassion is what I want to call it. What is compassion? The word compassion uh, comes from the root of to suffer with. Compassion. Come means like to be with or in community, right? The same root. Passion, you know what the root word of passion, it's actually suffering or you know, it's that it's that old. Uh, you've probably heard the, the phrase, "the passion of the Christ." The passion of the Christ isn't the Christ's love for humanity. Well, yes, it's actually the the, the crucifixion. Right? The passion of the Christ was had a whole experience. It's the suffering 
of the Christ, right? So, so compassion is to suffer with. That's what it means. And, and, and I don't mean that you have to suffer to have a successful business. What I mean is think of the last time you saw someone who was suffering, who was struggling, who needed help, and your heart just naturally led you to, to want to help that person, to think about ways to help that person, to do whatever you could you know, within your boundaries to help that person. That's compassion, to suffer with empathy in other words right to be naturally moved to serve someone wh whom you believe you can help and and and, and uplift and and uh, support that's compassion so bringing that into business means you are going to say am i so much in my passion now uh and 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 but i should mention by the way you could build a business based on passion alone. You could, just like I said, there are some people who have, um, let's not even use the word compassion, but there are people who are unethical, who don't care about people at all, but make tons of money, right? Who don't care about law of attraction, don't even affirm anything, who don't even have their energies in integrity or anything, but they make tons of money because they all they care about is noticing the patterns in the market and making money based on that, okay? So, we know we can make money from the side of quote, so-called compassion, being being uh, aware of the energies of the market and then aligning our, our ourselves with that. We know we can make tons of money there. But we know also that takes us off balance because we we also have our own experiences we want to explore, our own authenticity we want to express. And so then we 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 get way over on this side of of passion. And can you build a business on passion alone? You can. It just takes a long time, something like 10 to 20 years, to, you know, maybe not, maybe some people, some of you are very clever and can do it faster than me, but I, I'll tell you, I am now in my 13th year in business. I started in 2009, and so I'm now in my 13th year, and now I'm starting to see that I could build a business based on passion because I've now spent all this time, you know, doing all the work to grow a true fan audience that because that if I just have some idea, I think it's a cool idea, they'll probably buy it. Enough of them will buy it where I could still make a eke out a living. But it's taken me 13 years. I don't know how long it'll take you just based on passion alone, right? Now, of course, during these 13 years, I've also uh, done as much as I could to bring in the compassion energy so that I could have a more balanced business. But at this point, now that I've built an audience, I could just build a business based on passion alone. So it really passion alone business, which is what a lot of us think authentic business is about. Like, oh, I just I have this idea. I want to just do it. I want to make money doing. I, I have this skill that I love using to serve others. And why can't others get it? <laughs> you know, why don't they get it? That I'm so good. Where do I find the people who are going to buy from me? From me? Who are going? Where where are going? Where am I going to find the people who will buy how brilliant I am and how wonderful I am and how how much I can help them? That's all passion-based business stuff. You're, you're just thinking about yourself and how much you want to deliver the skill. It's all passion-based. And you can do that. You just have to spend, like I said, to me, it's spent 13 years to, to, to get to this point where I, now I could have a passion. I don't know how long it would take you. But you just have to like make a lot of contacts over the years, you know, build a lot of trust and warmth over the years with thousands of people. Until they're like, well, you're such a good person. Whatever you say, I will do, <laughs> you know, or whatever you're selling, I'll probably just, I'll give it a try. I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'll give it a try. That's a passion-based business. Or passion-based call also could mean that you are so consistent over the years in educating the world about a particular area. You just keep on educating, keep on educating, keep on educating. The world doesn't get it first. You know, you're like a Buckminster Fuller where you're ahead of your time, but you just keep on educating about that one and keep on creating content consistently about that one area or that one passion you have you educate them enough where they're like oh so this is in my example that's joyful productivity when i started my business in 2009 i was trying to sell joyful productivity nobody wanted to buy it nobody bought it joyful productivity like what is that what does that mean um i don't want to spend money on this uh and it really so i kept educating the world about joyful productivity year after year after year after year and still every time i tried selling it it would it would flop it would flop it would flop no one not 
no one. Eventually, over the years, a few people started buying it. Okay, and then from 2009 all the way fast forward to 2018, I launched Joyful Productivity Program yet again, and this time, I started to notice. Oh, more people are buying it in a way where I could start to see this could become a, a, a core part of my income. It took me, like I said, just about 10 years of educating the world about this idea of joyful productivity before people were willing to trust me and not just to trust me, but to love the idea so much that they would be willing to spend money on it. So 2018 was when I started to see that the tide start to shift. And uh, last year, 2021, when I launched TLC, the joyful productivity program, I, I was surprised. It went, it, it did, it did very well. Um, I could, it was basically a full-time income to TLC for most coaches, it would definitely be considered a full-time income. And then now in 2022, it's doing even better. You know, so it, it's, like I said, it, it's taken 12, 13 years of passion, education, joy for party, all this time until people, enough people believe me and like the topic enough where they're like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll buy it. So now I've, I've explained to you that you can build a passion-based business. You can also build a compassion-based business, but wouldn't it be nice if you, especially if you want an authentic business faster, you know, the, the phrase authentic business, I think is a wonderful sort of integration of, of, of uh, passion and compassion. Authentic is the passion side. Business is the compassion side. Remember that money comes from other people. So the more you can align with their energies and sell what they want, the more they're going to eat, the more quickly they're going to pay you. Right. So authentic business is this integration of passion and compassion. And how do we do that? Essentially, if you want money faster, if you want an income faster, you need to lean more into the compassion energy for the time being, not, not to abandon your passion, not to abandon your soul. That's not what we're saying. But we're leaning in during our marketing time we, and during the time you work on your, on your business, you're leaning into compassion and saying, how can I notice the struggle, the, the suffering, the yearning of the people that I can reach? I don't know how many people you can reach right now. Um, some of you don't have an email list or a social media audience, but you do have Facebook friends. You do have a few LinkedIn contacts. You do have some people you can email. You have friends. You have some colleagues. You have some classmates. If you can, if you can do the work of contacting them in, in a truly loving, caring way and ask them questions so that you can understand where are their struggles, their yearnings, their goals, their um, desires, as aligned with some aspect of your passion. This is where we're integrating here. If you can ask them the questions that help you understand their struggles or their yearnings as aligned with some aspect of your passion, now you're onto something. Because now you say, oh, I was going to sell this XYZ coaching program because I was so passionate about it. But you're helping me understand that I could repackage my skills to sell this ABC coaching program that's going to much more align with what you are struggling with and what you're looking for, actively looking for. Okay, I understand now. And if several people tell you, if you can start to see the patterns of what people are saying in terms of their struggles and their yearnings, and then you can match that with your passion and your skills and, your, and, and your, the things you want to provide, beautiful. Now you've got a truly authentic business where you are selling what the market wants, and yet you are flavoring it with your unique presence, your authentic passion, and your authentic uh, style and way of doing things. Now, one of the, um, uh, I, I wanna call forth a quote from, from one of the, 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 the uh, viewers of a long ago version of this video. Uh, thank you to Paul Sampong for saying, you know, he says, another point, when you choose your audience first, one that you care about, your passion may find you, he wrote. As you strive to help them succeed or overcome their obstacles, you also find purpose and fulfillment in the work that you do. Beautifully said. And he said, I reminded of the story of the hospital janitor who was observed diligently and happily 
attending to a coma patient's room, cleaning, restocking medical supplies, even placing flowers by the bed. And when asked how he could be so happy about this apparently mundane job, he enthusiastically replied, I'm helping the patient get better. Studies show that patients who wake up in a warm environment get better more quickly. Those who don't, they go downhill fast. I'm making sure that the doctor has everything he needs to provide the best care and the patient is in the best environment to recover. The, the, the janitor linked his work to the patient's recovery, not his paycheck. He this is compassion here. He reframed his work into a purpose larger than himself and in doing so, found passion. That's a beautiful, beautiful example. Now, most of us aren't going to start a janitorial business. We probably want to do some kind of healing or some kind of mentorship or some kind of facilitation or some kind of coaching. Yet these skills, like I said, can be packaged in a way that people go, I'm struggling with this. I'm, I'm needing this right now. I'm looking for this kind of thing. And th so it's, it's, that's essentially the job of marketing. What is marketing? It's to understand and serve the market. Marketing is to meet the market where they're at and provide them with a product or service that they eagerly want to buy. And so this is the integration of compassion with your passion. I hope this is helpful as an inspirational way to find where is your energy aligned and how you might want to uh, invest more of your energy so that you can help your business to be viable and to thrive. I hope this is helpful. I'm always open to your comments and your questions below. And thank you so much for watching.